Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. PISA, the Programme for International Student Assessment, is an international OECD study which every three years evaluates education systems worldwide by testing thousands of 15-year-olds in reading, maths and science in terms of the knowledge and skills needed in adult life. We'll look at the latest results. China is consistently ranked very high in the PISA results. And the last survey shows that the education system in Shanghai not only outperformed all the other 64 participants, but increased their lead. It's 6 p.m. on a wintry night in Shanghai, and students like 14-year-old Zhang Zhe have only just finished their classes. Last year, thousands of Shanghai youngsters took part in the OECD's PISA survey. Their high scores attracted the attention of both educators and critics. I normally go to school at quarter past seven. The earliest time I finish class is at six o'clock in the evening. But sometimes we finish very late. When I get home, I always spend more than two hours revising my courses, mostly chemistry and maths. Zhenzhe will go on to study in high school next year, but he must first excel in his exams to be considered by the better schools. For the past few weeks, he's been cramming extra hard for an important test. Zhenzhe's mother is also keen on him getting a good grade. She wants to have a doctor in the family. I always remind him to recite. I will sit beside him and watch him recite. He must be annoyed with me by now. With exams imminent, Zhengzhe continues to revise right up to bedtime. In the morning, he'll get up at 6 a.m. for another tough day. Here at the Qingyun Middle School, students are also busy preparing for their midterm exams. It's one of 165 schools selected to participate in the past two PISA surveys. Their student scores were above the regional average. Mathematics is a fundamental subject. Learning maths can raise the students' comprehensive qualities and can also raise a nation's comprehensive ability and creativity. The major subjects, languages, maths and science, are given more priority. This exam-driven culture causes some students to focus on these subjects in order to get good grades. Education expert Zhang Bingqi believes PISA results can help educators reflect on what the Shanghai education system may be lacking and help stimulate education reforms. Our overall reform is towards multifaceted education. We can pay more attention to students' character and their holistic development. This is one of the goals in our education reform. Educators are now taking a more balanced approach, striving to maintain high standards in maths and science without sacrificing what were traditionally considered less important studies. Asian countries took the top seven places in math skills, followed by five European nations, including Estonia. Results there have significantly improved since the country first participated in PISA, although the education system faces many challenges. Let's have a look in this next report at the government's efforts to improve the situation. In the 2012 PISA test of 65 countries, Estonia scored highly. In reading and maths, young Estonians ranked 11th in the world and were in the top six in Europe. More specifically, the country's 15-year-olds are among the best performing in Europe and the world, according to PISA standards. They were confident they'd do well in the PISA test. It was basically logical questions. You didn't need to prepare yourself in any way. I could answer every question without hesitation. All questions answered. I guess the outcome had to be positive. The Kadriru Saxa High School in the capital Tallinn is a fairly big school with over 900 students, but the focus is increasingly on the individual. More and more we see the student as an individual. 
We try to adapt the teaching to meet the needs of every student. Estonia regained its independence after the Soviet collapse in 1991. There are still huge income differences regionally, though this isn't reflected in educational achievements. Parents and students value education very highly. That's an important thing, and the biggest reason for the PISA success. The post-Soviet curriculum of 1996 was a step in the right direction. It defined the goals for learning, but not the means to achieve them, and emphasized the autonomy of schools. The method is efficient. The government control of schools is much less than many other countries. We only have a few national level exams. With a population of just 1.3 million, feedback from Estonian schools reaches education officials quickly, making it possible to react to information promptly. The Estonian example shows that with the right approach to education, standards do improve in the long run. <laughs> So, are PISA results really the yardstick for educational success? Why does PISA only evaluate math, science and reading when other surveys look at a much broader range of subjects? We hear two different opinions on the controversy. Two opposing views from both sides of the Atlantic on a controversial education evaluation system. We can trust the OECD PISA survey just like we can trust uh, any social indicator. I think people need to keep in mind that there's no perfect uh, way of measuring any social issue. I think the simple answer is no. There are many problems with PISA. The value of the, the, the PISA study is that it really tries to tell us a little bit more about what is happening, what is coming out of the education systems and, and how education systems are performing uh, across the OECD countries. As a research tool to explore differences between countries in their educational systems, PISA is quite useful. I think the, the difficulty is that what makes the headlines, the things that get reported in the media are simply the overall rankings, the crude league tables. Reading performance and, and mathematics performance of children uh, often predict very well the overall uh, performance in a school and that's why I think we should not probably include any further subjects in the PISA study because uh, I, I find it very difficult to uh, understand how we could have social studies or history or foreign languages or something like this uh, that could be you know, measured reliably across the countries. I think we have to start by considering um, whether we should even use PISA to compare those three subjects. Um, there are other things uh, in the school system, uh, but when you look around the world, you will find that different countries tend to concentrate on just testing and assessing those three aspects. If we can use the information from the survey data, uh, helping us to understand what makes uh, our school systems more inspiring and attractive places for young people, this is a particular issue here in Finland, I think we can improve uh, both our education system and our schools. I think that um, there is a real danger that OECD, through PISA, appears to be attempting to control what goes on within the different educational systems across the world. It has been accused of trying to be a world ministry of education. So, what do you think? Are PISA results important? Have you ever taken part in a PISA test? If you have, we would love to hear from you. 
In fact, why not share all your ideas about education with us on our social media pages? Goodbye for now from all the Learning World team. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.